Hi everyone, let's go ahead and get started with a CNN project human or horse classification. We will be using convolutional neural network to do these differentiation between an image of a human and a image of a horse. Alright, so we'll start with the overview of the image classification using CNN. As you can see in this image here, this is a kind of a a CNN architecture and uh, for image classification if you see these kind of the CNN architecture you will see that for a given image first of all there has to be a feature learning or a feature extraction thereafter a classification happens at the last stage but all the learning feature learning about this particular image happens for in between these uh, initial layers of uh, convolutional neural network. This is the input. In this case, we are having here a car image. But in our current example set, we will be taking human and uh, horse image for convolutional neural network. We will be also using here a binary classification. That means there will be just a single cell and that cell will represent either a, a horse or a, a, or a human there. So how this image classification actually works? Image classification is a task of assigning these labels to a particular image based on the output given by machine learning algorithms. In this current example set, we will be using convolutional neural network. This convolutional neural network will be used to extract the features of the image. Thereafter, the classifier works to classify labels of these images. In convolutional neural network, you have there many layers of the neurons. The first layer is known as the input layer. Thereafter, these layers are known as the hidden layer. And the last layer is known as the output layer. Where you see these cells are connected to each other, these cells are known as fully connected layers. Thereafter, you have in the last stage, either you have a softmax or a sigmoid type of the activation function, depending on how many classes you have. If you want to do just binary classification, generally, a sigmoid activation function is placed at the output. If you have multi-label classification, then a softmax activation function is used there. Before that, you also see there a flattened layer. So this flattened layer actually flat these volume type of uh, 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 network in a single kind of the vector, a single vector or a single dimension vector. Then this single dimension vector is fully connected with another fully connected layer or you can say the dense layer. Before that, these feature extractions are happening at the multiple convolutional layers. Each of these convolutional layers may combine a convolutional layer uh, activation function. Thereafter, it can also combine a dropout. It can also combine batch normalization. It can also combine max pooling and uh, it can also combine some other uh, 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 the convolutional uh, features there. Uh, probably I'm talking about the regularization. Working principle of any a, a, any neural network is very simple. It, it input starts from here. Thereafter, it goes to the input layer. Then it also takes account of all the convolutional neural network features. Then the image features are extracted here. Then this information goes forward in forward direction. That's why these are known as a feed forward network. But when this classification or these prediction happens at the output stage, a margin of the error or you can say the error margin is calculated at the last stage. And if there is large error or even if there is error, then that feedback is actually passed to the previous layers. So that type of the propagation is known as the back propagation. Be because the information is passing here in the backward direction. So in the next iteration, the weights of the convolutional neural network can be improved or it can be updated so that you can get the correct output there. 
All right, let's move ahead and see TensorFlow dataset. So in this lecture, we will be using here TFTS, that's the TensorFlow dataset to download our dataset. Generally, the deep learning dataset are very large and earlier, few years back, it was difficult to find these dataset. But nowadays, TensorFlow dataset offers all these dataset at a single place in a free of cost. There are other places from where you can also get the dataset. Like you can get from the Kaggle, you can get from the GitHub, you can get from the OpenML. But seems like the TensorFlow dataset is, is very uh, uh, easy and the appropriate place where you can integrate your TFDS with your code very easily. Otherwise, uh, at the other places, you may need to do the additional process there to get the data set. So this TFDS, you can simply visit the TFDS at the tensorflow.org forward slash data sets. Once you visit that, then you can click on the catalog. Then you will be seeing all these list of the data sets. Let's go ahead and click on this. Then we will be directed to our data set here. So as you can see, it's tensorflow.org dataset catalog and overview there. So in this dataset here, it is saying that a getting started guide is there, which can explain you how you can get the dataset. All right. Uh, how, how you can first install the tensorflow dataset. Thereafter, it also says how you can download this dataset. It's a very simple process where you import tensorflow dataset tfds then you load you pass the name of the dataset which you want to load and then you also assign there what type of the split you want you want train split test split or validation split if you want to pass their shuffle files then the dataset will be shuffled while downloading so this is very simple process and uh, it provides a lot of other features over the github and the kaggle data set like you can assign here a split other than that you can also assign the percentage of the split to download suppose that for a data set you have only trained data set 10,000 rows then you can assign 80 percent of the trained data set at the trained data and the rest 20 percent you can assign as the test data so these features are provided by the tensorflow data set itself there all right and uh, it takes some of these parameters as input parameter like you provide shuffle files split data dir where you pass that where you want to store your data set if you do not pass any data dir default data set will be default directory for the data set will be this and uh, if you want to get the more information or detailed information about the data set then you pass there with info is equal to the true and then download equal to the false then it will not download the data set but in fact it will directly load the data set into your variable all right so this is kind of introductory knowledge about the tfds then you can click on community catalog in community catalog you can see all type of available data set here so you can see all these data sets are here. All right, hugging face data set you have. You have so many data set. It's actually a huge list here. All right, this is huge list. If I zoom out it a little, uh, not that much. Okay, this is actually community catalog. You click on the catalog actually. So if you click on the catalog, you will see here a complete list of complete list of the data set it's a huge data set actually if you want to see our horse and the human data set you can simply type their horse this is inside the image classification click on horse or human data set now you will be you know redirected to at this place thereafter you can see this data set this particular data set have here version 3.0 the download size is 153 mb thereafter this type of the data set this horse and human data set have a two split here test split and train split in a test split it has total 256 examples 
and in train split it has total 1027 examples there this is kind of the examples where you see there you have the horses you have some humans now you see these horses doesn't look like a real horse or these humans doesn't look like a real human because these are generated with the computers so these are actually the cgi images these image uh, the, these image are uploaded by the lawrence uh, uh, lawrence morini you can also see the home page where uh, from where this data set uh, got the donation there all right and if you are using this in production or if you are using it to publish the research paper then you should cite this particular data set all right let's go back to our code here now in code what we see this data set about the data set we have already seen that the 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 total number of images available for our training and the test data set now we need to install our tensorflow data set thereafter we can start coding our tensorflow uh, thereafter we can start coding convolutional neural network for human and horse classification all right let's go ahead and install tensorflow data set before that you need to set your runtime machine you need to click on runtime change runtime type thereafter you need to select here hardware accelerator to gpu all right although this is very small convolutional neural network you may not need to select the gpu for this particular things i think the none is more than enough to get started with this because it is going to be a very simple process you don't need any kind of the gpu but if you make a very heavy convolutional neural network then i would suggest you to do the gpu i am not selecting gpu here because gpu machine is a little slow when i connect it that takes a little time so that's why i didn't connect that with gpu it's just a cpu where our training will happen with the cpu thereafter all right so after this connecting the machine then you need to install tensorflow data set you can use here pip install tensorflow data set all right pip install tensorflow data set it will install the data set once all these things are done then you can import the tensorflow as a tf and the tensorflow data set as the tfds you do not need to install the tensorflow because on google colab tensorflow automatically comes as pre installed software or pre installed python package there if you don't know i should tell you that i am using here google google colab you can create new notebook from here new notebook otherwise you can get this notebook from my github repository and you can get started with this particular project all right tensorflow data set is installed thereafter we are going to import tensorflow and tensorflow data set once all these import is done now you see the data set name is very simple it's just horse or humans you need to copy this data set name all right so you copy this data set name and then you come back here thereafter you need to load this data set using the tfds all right so all the necessary libraries are imported here let's go ahead and download our data set okay i'm just going to write here download data set in this i write here data set and info basically when you call here tfds dot load and you give the name of the data set then it download this data here there are some other input parameter which you can pass here something like let's say with info it says that we also with info is equal to true that means we we, we can get the information of the data set here and thereafter if i say here as supervised is equal to the true that means it will download here input features as well as the target variables together because i'm saying that i want the data set for supervised machine learning training that means we need the input and we also need here the target classes thereafter you need to run it and if you run it then it's going to download this data set here all right so the by default it will download the data set at this particular location here and it has downloaded the data set it's pretty much fast and if you check it if you check the info here you can simply 
check the information of the data set here this says that the whole data this this says the information about the whole data set and uh, if you print here the data set in this data set you will be seeing here multiple splits you have the train split and you have a test split each of these split have the image size 300 cross 300 and image are here the color image that's the rgb image that means these image are three channel image here all right all right so let's go ahead and see the classes of our data set classes we can simply see with the class names is equal to the info dot features all right so this was the info info dot features and uh, in this we need to provide here label and thereafter you can click on here names so simply this is going to provide us here class names all right this particular should be the their names something like that you will get the names and if you just do here info let me tell you again here in this info you have here many type of the output in this output you have their feature inside this feature you have their label and inside this label there are two number of classes and inside this label if you go and call the names it will tell you the name of the classes so that's how you 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 have got here horse and humans classes there for your data set although we know that our data set is stored at the default location but we do not have but, but we do not have anything to see the data as the picture or as the image because whenever the data set is downloaded from the tfds it is stored as the tf record instead of jpeg file or the image or you can say the pictures but you cannot visualize the tf records so we are going to we are going to store our tf records in the form of the images here and i'm going to create here new directory inside this root folder and uh, we will be storing our human and horse data there so that we can visualize there and we can see there the pictures of the human and the horse thereafter we will use the data loader from the keras to read the data directly all right let's go ahead and create the directory and save our human and horse data in this root directory i'm going to enumerate over the data set train split so i call here data set and then here i call as the train so now i'm going to iterate over the train split this is kind of the uh, uh, this this data set is the tf record data set now i need to iterate over this so i write here the for i comma example in enumerate data set train all right once all these things happens now you see the data set train we are enumerating it i and the example thereafter what happens we have image label is equal to example 0 and example 1 all right so see what happens here this data set is combined as the supervised data set so there you will be having here image and you will be also having label against each image that's when this is kind of you can say a, a kind of the tuple which is combined together with the image and its target value that's why i'm reading these in the image and the label these are the two variable name there thereafter i i say that here save directory i'm gonna call the save directory as this as this directory as the root directory so this dot says that this is going to be the current root directory inside that i say here horse or human and this is going to be the train directory thereafter i need to get here the image all right so 
I, I need to also store our data in a proper directory where we will be having horse or human a train thereafter we will be saying whether it is horse or human so we will maintain there a directory structure so i say that here the train thereafter based on this label this will change either to human or the horse so i say here dot format and thereafter i provide here the class names which i had seen earlier and then based on this label value so this label is actually the numerical value 0 and 1 and with the help of this class name we would be able to get their class class name either human or the horse so that we can create a directory of the train slash human and the horse if you just simply print this save dir then you would be able to see that i'm just gonna do here the break so that it should run just a single time so now you see a current directory this directory and then you have here horse or human a new directory will get created there inside that a new directory train is created and then horses is the class name which also get created there all right so this is this would be the uh, uh, the hierarchy of uh, directory where our data will be stored let's go ahead and do here os.make directory so if directory doesn't exist then i'm gonna just do here os dot make dirs so it's going to create a multi-level directory there if it doesn't exist and if it exists it will just pass it as it is for that i need to say that exist okay i need to do here all right perfect exist is equal to the okay and then i say here the true that means when directory exists then do not throw any error once all these things are done thereafter we need to get the file name but before that let's go ahead and run it one more time then you should be able to see your horse and human directories here and uh, we should also see their uh, horses inside a train folder there all right so why this is happening just a single time because we have run it just a single time thereafter we applied here a break statement so it will just break your execution at this particular stage it will not move forward all right so horse is created now our task is to store the name of the image and the name of the image we are going to get it from the class name and then we will also give there the class name and the numbers because there is no proper naming of these images these are just the data all right these are the data so this data we need to store as the image and for those images we need to give some name and that name i'm going to take from the class name because inside this horses i'll be storing all the horses so i'm going to give a horse name something like uh, horse underscore zero then horse underscore one something like that so those are going to be the file name so i say here the file name equal to thereafter i need to provide here first the class name so this is going to be the class name all right either the horse or the human so for that i'm gonna create something like this underscore something like this so for this i do here a format and then the class name so what happens this class names will get filled up here dynamically whatever the class name is there be it horse or the human that will get filled here so it will become let's say if it is the horse it will become horse underscore thereafter i need to provide here i so that i can say that this is the number of the image there thereafter i provide here i let's go ahead and do the print for the file name as well and run it and then see so now if i do like that now you can see there this is the horses underscore zero now if i combine this file name and the save directory together you will be seeing there horse or human train horses and inside the horses you will be having horses underscore zero one two three something like that let's go ahead and get the complete file path here so i'm just gonna get the complete file path i get here something like this file path is equal to save dir this one all right 
and thereafter I do here the plus I'm just gonna do here the plus for the file name as well now if you print this file path you should be able to see here the complete path something like this so it will get stored all the horses inside these horses and all the humans will get stored into the humans folder once all these things are done let's go ahead and uh, delete this print statement now we do not need the print statement we just need to simply save our image i'm going to use here the tensorflow save image method so i write here the tf dot keras dot preprocessing dot image dot save img with this we need to provide here first the path if you see it takes the path thereafter we need to provide here the data and then the data format these are the three input which we need to provide here so i provide here all right so save image thereafter i provide here file path then the data so this data is stored in the image variable i provide here the image and the format i'm going to provide here the png all right let's go ahead and run it now once you run it you should be able to see this all right so okay uh, this one is actually wrong okay all right just remove that one and run it it says that there is a known file extension uh, seems like something i'm missing oh yes so that extension i'm missing so in this i'm going to provide here the jpg so all the file will get stored with the name as the jpg there let's go ahead and run it now you should be able to see your jpg here horses underscore zero dot jpg and if you double click on this it will open here so this is the horses there and if i just remove this break statement from here it's going to run it for the everything let's go ahead and uh, uh, collapse this one so that we can save some space here it's gonna take some time here and it took almost the 10 seconds to store the images now you can see what happens here you have here the horses you have here the human all the horses are stored inside this horses folder and the name of these horses are actually used with the class label and uh, with the horse number there if you double click any of these items you will see there these the horses do you remember these horses are generated with the help of the cgi that's the computer generated graphics and thereafter you have for the human here so these humans are also uh, generated with the help of the cgi now you can see there you have the male and the females something like this do you see this all right so this is the horse and the human there all right perfect so you have got your data set stored here this is the train data in a similar fashion we need to also store our test data as well so we just need to copy this whole thing from here and then we need to paste it here all right so once we paste it here what are the things we which we need to change we need to first make sure that it is the test because now we need to store our test data thereafter this need to be the test as well thereafter seems like everything will be same as it is once you take here the test data and you change the directory rest of other things should be same what we had earlier it will be exactly the same here let's go ahead and run this file and then see what happens a new folder will get created inside this horse or human and if you just refresh it from here you will see it there i'm just going to save this file you have here the test data as well now inside this test data you have horses you can click any of these horses you can see these graphics generated horses and for a human you can also see these computer uh, generated humans here all right so we have successfully downloaded the images now you can see these images here horse and the human image 
in this horse or human image you have two directory test and the train inside each of these directory you will be having two more folders horses and the humans now our task is to visualize this data in this notebook other than that we will also learn how you can use image data generator for image pre-processing so image pre-processing is a technique where you do some kind of the transformations in your image so that you can make your image compatible to machine learning algorithms machine learning algorithms does not directly works on the images ml algorithm works on the data or the numerical data in fact so you need to convert these images you need to convert these images into a numerical data for these kind of the task for image pre-processing we have a keras image data generator class we can use these keras image data generator class let's go ahead and put it in full screen so that you can see it properly all right so if you click on here image data generator now you would be uh, redirected you would be redirected to here image data generator so this image data generator takes their uh, directory or the input where uh, it can generate the data all right so what we will do here we will get first the class of the image data generator thereafter we will start reading the data from the directory so it has many uh, a type of uh, uh, methods inside the image data generator which will help us to pre-process our image for example you can see image data generator is something like this once you have image data generator these are kind of uh, you know the pre-processing steps you are assigning here you will get their uh, data generator and then to this data generator you can say that take the data from the directory so something like that we are going to do in our uh, algorithm as well so we are going to first here call the image data generator we will make an instance of the image data generator and then we will start flowing the data from the directory so the directory we have here horse or human data is here okay let's go ahead and import our data so i say here from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator all right something like this and then i'm just gonna run it all right after running this it may give you this kind of the warning you can ignore these warning all right thereafter we need to define our train directory so i say my train dir is equal to this is going to be the train dir so i'm just going to get the copy path from there it says that it is inside the content horse or human and the train so this is the train dir all right i'm going to also say that here the default image size if you remember default image size was 300 cross 300 for our data set and i also say that the batch size the total number of the images it will process that is the batch size so i'm going to say that process 32 images together that is the batch size here then i say here the train underscore data gen is equal to image data generator and then i say here rescale is equal to 1 divided by 255 why do i do this one let me tell you all the rgb images are having range from 0 to 255 but machine learning algorithm works better when the data is in between 0 to 1 so we need to do here normalization and if we do the rescale of 1 divided by 255 it does their uh, normalization all right okay so thereafter i'm gonna get here train generator we have got the train data gen now we need to get the train generator that will generate the images something like this so we'll be getting a generator and this generator will be reading the data from the directory and then it will be giving us the data by reading images from the directory so that's what i'm going to get here i'm going to get here the train generator is equal to train underscore data gen dot flow from directory 
all right so i'm going to provide here the directory name so directory was if you remember it was the train dir that's the train directory thereafter i pass here the target size so what will be the image size while producing uh, output so i say here target size and in the target size i say here image underscore size thereafter uh, sorry this took automatically i say here the target size is equal to image size thereafter i say here the batch size all right so this batch size we are defining here it as the 32 thereafter class mode we know the class mode is binary here this is the class mode binary class mode and we have got the train generator similarly we are going to get here the test generator as well so for that we need to define here the test dir and test dir is this one i get here the copy path is equal to something like this it's pretty much simple what we did for the train data generator you need to just copy this whole thing from here and then you can paste it here this train data generator i need to just give a name as the test data gen thereafter this thing will be same as it is image data generator thereafter you need to give this one as the test generator as well and this test data gen you need to copy it here so that you can read the test data from the directory and this one will be also here test dir that means at this address we want to read the test data generator and the target size batch size all of these cases will be same as it is let's go ahead and run it it should be able to find out all the images and these images are divided into the two classes horse and the human and these images are currently having total 1027 image for the training and 256 images for the testing so these train data generator and the test data generator are working like uh, 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 collection of the data later on we will be passing these data generator to our model for the training purpose but before that we need to do some data visualization and some analysis on the test generator and the train generator let's go ahead and see the train generator and see what are the classes it has there so i write here the train and generator train underscore generator and this train generator is having a class of the directory iterator but if i say here dot class indices this is going to give us the total number of the classes available in train generator it says that the horse and the human there are two classes available here for each of these two classes it is giving the class name as the zero and the class name one so it's going to be the binary classification if output is 1 then it's a human if output is 0 then it is a horse basically 0 and the 1 it's rare probability that it will come so output will be coming in the form of the probability if something is greater than 0 0.5 then we consider that it is as human and if probability is less than 0 0.5 then we consider those as the horses all right that's the train data generator class indices let's see the file name uh, available in the train data generator so you type there the train generator underscore generator dot file names all right so you have it something like this in this you will be having all the file available for the train generator it has the human files it has the horses file although we are able to see just the humans one but it has both files horses and the humans inside the train generator you can see the first five files by typing something like this and the similarly you can see the last five files as well something like this so we have here the first five files and then well 
this is doing actually in the same seems like it is doing in the form of the tuple that's why it is not able to uh, get the first five files yeah uh, yes yes this is here first five files and this is all files after five we need the last five files we need to provide here minus five to this one so this is this is the first five files and then we have last five files in first five files we have here horses and in last we have here humans that's how you can see there thereafter you can also find out the total number of the samples available in your train data generator that you can see something like this train underscore generator dot samples if you do it something like this you would be able to get it here all right total 1027 samples are available there and that is matching what we had seen earlier all right perfect let's move ahead and uh, do the data visualization and uh, we can see here horse and the humans data in uh, 2 by 4 uh, 2 by 4 uh, matrix there i'm just gonna do here data visualization for the data visualization there are some libraries which we need to import here matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and then import matplotlib dot image as matplot img so these are the two method which we need to import from the matplotlib thereafter we need to define here the total number of the rows and the columns for our image representation i say here the number of rows which we are going to use two and number of columns which we are going to use here four so basically we are going to we, we are going to visualize our data into two by four matrix or two by four subplots and i'm going to get here the train data all right so we already have our train dir if you know that so train dir is already there this is here so we are going to visualize from the train dir all right let's go ahead and create here the image so i create here first of all uh, image canvas i write here the field is equal to the plt dot gcf all right so get the current figure here thereafter i set here the fig dot set size i'm gonna uh, uh, set the image size set size in inches so i'm gonna say here total number of columns multiplied by four all right so what i'm gonna do here total number of columns are four and i'm gonna define here four into four that's the 16 as the width of the image and uh, number of rows multiplied by four this is going to be the number of rows is two and eight so this is going to be like 16 cross 8 here as of now if you see there something like this all right why i did this i need to make it dynamic suppose that if tomorrow i change it to number of columns to 8 it should be automatically it, it should be able to handle it automatically all right perfect let's go ahead and move ahead i write here the next batch i need to get the batch of, uh, from the data generator so i write here the train underscore generator dot next so if i write it something like this train generator is going to give us the training data generator by typing next it is going to give us the next batch of the data right thereafter i write here next batch something like this let's go ahead and start taking the data from the batch now i need to iterate over the total number of columns in the rows so i have total two rows and four columns that means there would be 4 into 2 there would be total 8 images to display so i need to do here for i in range i start here with 1 to number of rows multiplied by number of columns all right so this is going to create here a range from 1 to number of rows to number of columns thereafter you need to provide here access is equal to plt dot subplot 
well this this i need to explain you just let me write the code i'll explain you how this is going to work well so this part i need to take you uh, uh, back uh, at the somewhere where we have multiple images something like this when i say subplot then i'm going to get here the axis of each of these subplot all right and in each of these subplot, if you do the image numbering, it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it starts from here, 0, 1, 2, 3, I mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, so it is something like that. So once you end with the 5 here at the end, then it starts with the next number. So like here we have total 3, 3 rows and the 2 columns. So this is kind of the 3 cross two matrix or three cross two subplot so in this three cross two subplot how many images are there three into two that's the six and it will start with one two left to right and then again number will increment from again you will come to here at the start and then again three four and then five six something like that so that's what we are going to do here the total number of columns multiplied by the total number of rows that becomes eight it start with the one two eight and then I'm going to get here the subplot of the first one because I, the first time I will be 1. So I'm going to get the axis of the first one, first time. Thereafter, I write here the ax dot axis as the off. Otherwise, we would be able to see the axis in the images as well. Thereafter, I write here the plt dot I am so. And in the next batch, the data which we are seeing here that I'm going to just copy and paste it here. Then I do it something with this 0 and then I. So what happens here? Next batch is kind of the two dimensional array. In the first batch, we take there. All right. It make it one dimensional array with this. And then with the help of the I, we read the data. All right. Now do remember our, our matrix start. The indexing of the array start with 0. And here we are starting with i, which starts with 1. Basically, we need to make it 0 here. So it will start with 0 to total number of columns multiplied by number of rows. And there i will start there. But again, at this particular point, what you will see there, number of rows and the number of columns i, the first time i will become 0. And the number of column and rows doesn't work with 0. So this you need to make it at least 1. So whenever your i is 0, it's going to multi it's going to add there plus 1. Alright. And when it is 1, then it is going to be 2. When it is 3, then it is going to be 4. Alright. Perfect. So we are going to get here the index i position for the image display. And I'm just going to do here the plt dot so. And just run it. And then we will be able to see it here. Alright, so now if you see there what happens total number of columns we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and there and then 4 and there are total 2 rows and the 4 columns. Alright, and if you change it to let's say 6 number of columns you do not need to change make changes here anything no changes at all. That's why I made it dynamic. So it's dynamic that is why you are able to see here all these six images in single row and then other six images in the second row. And if I comment this one, you would be able to see their axis. That's why I write their axis uh, ax dot axis off so that you shouldn't see any axis in the images. So these things we do not want it to see. That's why I wrote their axis is equal to the off there. Alright, every time I run it, I'm able to get there the random images because we are taking the images from the train generator. That's why we are able to see here the random images there. Alright. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with building convolutional neural network. We have already got our data generator. Let's go ahead and generate our uh, get our data generator once again so that we can get the fresh data generator. I'm just going to run this whole code once again. If you remember this one, uh, this one is wrong there. Okay, let's go ahead and just run this code once more. 
so that I can get the fresh data generator. Previously I had read there few batches. Now I have got here the fresh data generator once again. Thereafter I come to building CNN model. So this convolutional neural network we are going to build. There are some important parameters for the convolutional neural network. Like there is the input, this is input image. This input image goes to the input layer of the convolutional neural network. Then there are some other features of the convolutional neural network which we are going to utilize here like the convolutional layer then activation method and then we are also going to use here the pooling layers. All these things will be used together which will work as the feature maps or you can say that all these will work together as the feature extraction technique. So this whole process will extract the features and then at the final stage this classification will happen there. Do remember these parts are working as just the feature extraction. At the last stage when your classification happens those parts works as the classifier only. But for these working, uh, uh, for these to work as a better classifier these layers need to perform more uh, accurate that means these layer need to perform better feature extraction. So this layer need to do a better feature extraction. So it, it, it gives there the better result at the output here. Some of these parameter, these are the input uh, important parameters here. We have here an input shape, we have here a filters, kernel size, stride, padding, activation method and pooling size and the dropout. Let me tell you what are these things here. So the input shape is let's say you are given with the image. So what is the shape of the, your input image that is known as the input shape? A two dimensional convolutional neural networks takes a three dimensional uh, input there. If you are passing just single image then this whole image will be in two dimension and then you pass there a depth of the image. So the depth of image that means the number of images there. If it is just single image then it will be there one cross width of image cross height of the image and if you have a 10 image then it will be the 10 cross width of image cross height of the image. So for two dimensional image it will be there a three dimensional vector there. The number of filters says that how many number of feature maps will be there for each of these layers. So for a single convolutional neural network if I define a 30 features then there will be a 30 feature maps there. And the kernel size says that this is the let's say a filter size. So what will be the size of these filters that's the kernel size or you can say that the filter size. For two dimensional convolutional neural network filter size or kernel size is also two dimensional. A number of strides says that how you move forward with these strides there. Alright, so this says that the number of strides there. Thereafter you have here the padding. So the padding says that how many number of, uh, you know, uh, the, this padding says that there are two type of the padding in fact, the valid and the same padding. So when these feature uh, extraction kernel comes at the edge of your image, if you say that padding is valid, that means no padding. That means this feature, the, this kernel will not grow. This kernel will not go outside of this image. Alright, it will start from here and then with the help of the stride, it will move forward. But if padding is same, then it can come out of this image because because uh, uh, your, your uh, neural network is now bound to keep the output of these convolutional layers same as the input size. So in that case these will go outside of the image. So you need to provide there some kind of the padding outside of your image. Generally it is zero padding there. Then you have their activation function. So this activation function makes sure that it introduces non-linearity in your signal so that your, your, your model can learn a complex features there. The most famous activation functions are ReLU, TanH and Sigmoid and the Softmax. These are the some of the most uh, uh, famous activation methods we which we use in, in general. Thereafter we have here a pool size. So pooling size is something your image have there. It provides you a kind of uh, uh, you know 
these pool size you have there the image and out of these image let's say you provide there the two pooling so the two pooling means uh, 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 out of two value two cross two pooling that means out of those four value it will extract the one single value if you provide the pool size there and then you provide the dropout so the dropout is something where randomly you will drop some of the neurons connections just to not just to not pass the information so dropout introduce the regularization in your neural network so these are the building blocks of the convolutional neural network which we will be using as the input of uh, uh, input parameter of the convolutional neural network all right let's go ahead and get started with building our tensorflow neural network we will start with importing necessary packages and we will be also importing here convolutional neural networks thereafter we will build our model from tensorflow.keras.models inside this we are having all the tensorflow models so i i first export here sequentials thereafter from tensorflow dot keras dot layers then i import here convolutional 2d and then i import here max pool 2d all right so i'm gonna get here the max pool in 2d thereafter i i import here flatten and then i import here dense layer all these necessary layers convolutional neural network layers uh, we have imported here then we import here from tensorflow dot keras dot optimizers import adam so this is optimizers adam optimizers we are importing as of now later on we will also import uh, uh, many other optimizers as well let's go ahead and run this after running this it is saying something went wrong seems like few things are not available okay seems like the sequentials are not available obviously this is sequential only it's not sequentials all right so the sequential layer is kind of the container which contains information between uh, which which contains layers of the neural network together so sequential you can say that something is container which can contain all of these neural network layers in a kind of the single wrapper so we are going to put everything inside this sequentials i'm going to define here a method get model thereafter in this i create here first sequential model so i write here sequential thereafter i write here model dot add and then i'm going to create here convolutional two dimensional uh, convolutional two dimensional layer which you can call as convert 2d thereafter inside this i'm going to pass total number of the filters if you remember earlier i told you the filters are total number of feature maps i'm going to create here total 32 feature maps if you see in this in this convolutional neural network these numbers you see these are the feature maps so first time we are going to create here 32 feature map thereafter i create here kernel size in this kernel size i'm going to create here 3 cross 3 that means this is going to be the kernel size and this kernel size i'm going to create as 3 cross 3 that's when height and width will be same as a three pixels there then for padding i say the padding is same now you see there if padding is same so this padding means this results evenly to the left and the right up and down so that the output has same height and width dimension as its input so the padding i'm going to put here as the same padding that means whatever the size of this input the size of the output will be exactly same as the size of the as the size of the input after this padding i'm going to provide here the activation layer all right 
so in this i'm going to provide activation in this activation i say that i need to provide here the relu activation all right so this is going to be the relu activation method and then once this convolutional neural network is created thereafter we need to provide here the pooling layer so i'm going to provide here the pooling layer i write here model dot add and then write here max pool inside this max pool 2d i write here the pool size okay so the pool size is here too with this what happens here you have the max pooling all right you have your uh, uh, the features here inside this you provide the max pool so whatever the whatever the you know uh, the pool size is uh, selected there as i selected there the two that's mean out of these 2 by 2 matrix a 2 by 2 the features a single value will be extracted as the max value in case of the max pool 2d so this happens this this is first layer of the convolutional neural network let's go ahead and write the second layer of the convolutional layer but one more thing we are missing here that is the input save whenever you create the first time a neural network either you provide input save or input layer externally or you can provide the input save internally inside this convo2d i write here input underscore save and then equal to 300 comma 300 cross 3 so what happens here you have the input same in which we have 300 width and 300 height and then 3 channel so this is going to be the input save here all right once all these things happens here thereafter i'm going to put here second layer of the convolutional neural network i write here model dot add and then i write here convert 2d inside this i write number of filters is equal to 64 filters now i'm going to select 64 filter earlier i had here 32 all right so as you move forward as you move deeper in your neural network it's general practice that you make deeper and deeper network so you will be making here more and more features now i'm putting here 64 features thereafter kernel size standard kernel size is 3 by 3 and uh, uh, that's the standard one max to max you can put 5 into 5 kernel size then i'm going to again put here the 3 cross 3 kernel size thereafter i'm going to put here the padding is equal to same padding and other than that i'm going to put here the activation method in the activation method i'm going to use here the relu this is second layer of convolutional neural network second layer cnn and this was the first layer cnn once all these things are done i'm just going to add here the max pool once again all right after all these let's go ahead and create the third layer of convolutional neural network i simply copy this whole thing from there and then i pass here the third layer cnn in the third layer cnn i write here number of filters as 128 kernel size is 3 cross 3 padding is same activation is relu everything will be here as it is and then this pool size will be as here to 2 by 2 once all these things happens then if you see this neural network it says that once you had you you are done with your convolutional neural network then you need to write here the flattened layer and the fully connected layer and thereafter you need to connect the softmax activation function in case of the multi-class classification and sigmoid activation function in case of the binary classification so i write here the flatten layer and dnn that's the deep neural network or you can say the fcn fully connected neural network and uh, or it is also known as the dense neural network all right then i write here the model dot add then this is going to be the flatten 
so this flatten layer is a standard layer it doesn't take any input there you can just pass it as it is thereafter i write here model dot add and then i'm going to add here the dense layer which is also known as a fully connected layer 512 means 512 neurons or 512 neural cells i'm going to connect there and the activation i'm going to connect here the relu activation method once all these things are done now we are done with our model and now i need to connect the last layer that's the output layer now we know that this is binary classification how do we know that because in our data we have just the two uh, in, because in our data we have just two classes if you remember what we had earlier let me just uh, show you that here all right we had just two classes all right so these two classes are there and for these two classes we will be adding just a single cell so with the help of the single cell we will be able to classify as hum we will be able to classify our images as the human or horse based on the predicted probability if something is greater than 0.5 you see there the one says that the human if something is greater than 0.5 then that is the human if it is less than 0.5 then that is the horse there because this says that the 0 and the 1 it is one when crosses the threshold and threshold is 0.5 that we will set manually once all these things are done then i'm going to add here model dot add dense layer in the in the in, in this dense layer i'm adding here just single neuron and the activation method i'm going to add here the sigmoid why sigmoid sigmoid can classify binary data uh, so so we are going to use here just a sigmoid here thereafter i'm going to just return this model now we are done with our model building in next uh, now now in next process we are going to read our model and then we will be also analyzing our model thereafter we will train our model all right let's go ahead and get started with our model testing so we need to first get our model you can simply write here model is equal to get model and if you see now this model this model is now a deep learning model seems like something is wrong a kernel size is missing let me see which one is missing there kernel size okay so this is actually i have written as kernel size this should be as kernel size this part is creating the problem let's go ahead and run this again and here i'm going to again now i got here a model instance this model instance is as a sequential model thereafter you can get the model summary so you can type here model dot summary with this you will get the model summary you can see here layers of your model they are convolutional 2d then another convolutional 2d convolutional 2d so there are three convolutional neural network and there after the max pooling you have there if you remember earlier we wrote their max pool but it got converted as the max pooling 2d so we have here a max pooling as well and each of these are saying as total number of parameters required to calculate your uh, uh, to to do the prediction actually in your model so the first layer uh, first layer is having total 896 parameter second layer is having total 18496 parameter the last layer is having a huge number of the parameters this one is having like 89 million parameters and if you combine everything together you will be having their total 89 million parameters all right so this is the 89 million trainable parameters and zero non trainable parameter that means for all of these parameters weight of your neural network will get changed when you start training all right you can also access these layers one by one as well if you type here model dot layers then you can access all of these layers you see there sequential your sequential uh, uh, api here this sequential api contains all these layers together and this is what we were seeing in model dot summary we had convolutional 2d max pool convolutional 2d max pool convolutional 2d and the max pool flat layer and then these were the tens layer 
all of these we had there in the model dot layers now let's go ahead and i try uh, uh, and uh, try to see the model uh, these layers name actually you can see model dot uh, layers all right if you select here zero you will be selecting here the first layer and if you type here the name then you will be seeing the convolutional 2d3 all right so this is the name of the, your convolutional 2d layer all right you can also get the weight of your convolutional layer you can see the weight and the bias if you remember in neural network a cell is connected with the weight and the bias all right so we are going to get the weight and the bias for the first layer if you just write these here and then you type here the get underscore weights you are going to get here the default weights of layer the first layer so these are the default weight and uh, at the last you will be having in the last you will be having default bias if you check the size of this for the first layer you will be seeing that the size of this is 32 because we have total 32 features there all right do you see this 32 that's the output shape because this is coming from this number of filters so we have total number of filters 32 that is why if you see these will be having the size of the 32 there all right let's go ahead let's go ahead and read these in the form of the weights and the biases we get it something like this and if you check the length of your bias you will be seeing that the size is here 32 all right mm -hmm. and if you keep seeing this one by one you can see for all the layers here but you need to also pay attention for the max pool layer you will not be having any weight for max pool layer because max pool layer doesn't have any weight you see that in model summary there as well in model summary number of parameters are zero so for any layer which have number of parameters as a zero you will not be having any weights for those layers if you put it here one then this will be this will be uh, a max pool layer and in fact in the max pool layer we do not have any weight uh, method there that is why it is saying that there is nothing there so if you just remove this and just you try to print it you will get there none that's the zero that is empty that's the nothing so you will get weight only for convolutional neural network you will not get any weight for these these and these layers or the flattened layers whatever the layers are having there the zero number of parameters we do not have any weight or bias for those layers all right so model building is done let's go ahead and start the training we need to first make our optimizer i'm going to create here adam optimizer so i write here tf dot keras dot optimizers dot adam in this Adam optimizers, I'm going to keep here learning rate is equal to 0 0.001. So that's the learning rate. Thereafter, I'm going to create here model compile. So model dot compile. In this, I'm going to create here optimizers is equal to Adam optimizers. Then the loss function I'm going to provide here binary cross entropy. See we are having currently binary classification that's why we are going to provide here binary cross entropy okay so we provide loss method as binary cross entropy and the matrix we provide here accuracy all right so based on the accuracy your model will get evaluated and accordingly it will produce the output thereafter i'm gonna read or your your we are going to read our model history in a variable history that's the model training history so the model dot fit and then we need to provide here the train generator all right and then we provide here number of epochs is equal to the five and then we provide here validation data in the validation data we provide here test generator Alright, 
so this train generator if you remember we had actually got this at the start of this lecture and test generator we had also got that at the start of the lecture once everything is done then you can just hit the enter it will start the training seems like something is missing okay seems like i have made some mistake here in optimizers perhaps at this place uh, this should be actually the optimizer optimizer is equal to the adam optimizer so i made a name i made a mistake while uh, writing that a typo there all right so the training has started number of epoch starts with one two five i'm currently training it on cpu i think it will take a while but uh, if you have a gpu access you can simply train it on the gpu but overall be it on gpu or the cpu it will not take much time okay seems like it is taking time so for a single epoch it will take around the seven minute so this is quite a lot we we, we cannot wait for this longer this, this much you know the, uh, this much of the time and for five epoch it will take around uh, around 35 to 40 minute let's go ahead and change the runtime i change this runtime to gpu and just save it and it's gonna re reconnect everything and thereafter i'm gonna click on runtime again and then i'm gonna run everything all right run all so once I type there run all, it is going to run everything, whatever we had earlier. So all these code will uh, get it run by once. And thereafter, it will start uh, training our model here. All right. Perfect. Let's go ahead and save it. All right. You can click on yes, because we just changed our runtime. So so it, it failed to save our uh, 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 it failed to save our code there but we have saved that now all right so it has started you can wait for some time seems like uh, it has started with uh, downloading the data once data download is done everything is being done here very fast it don't take much of the time and then it will simply come and it will start the training our model all right perfect it has started training our model it's going to take a while not too much time but it's like just uh, uh, the fraction of second it's going to train because currently it is being trained on uh, gpu now you see the training is very much fast on cpu it was taking around seven to eight minutes but now it's taking just 20 seconds to train it even less than 20 seconds perhaps it took like six seconds for a single epoch now if you see your uh, model accuracy let me just see it here what do you see there your accuracy at the start it was 80 percent but thereafter it becomes 71 uh, that's the validation accuracy so your model started overfitting although your training data achieved like 100 percent of the accuracy but your test test or the validation accuracy is coming around the 80 so in this case your model is actually the overfitting so how you can avoid this overfitting for this i have made series of the lectures there in the coming lectures not in this exactly but in coming lectures i'll be teaching you how you can introduce how you can introduce dropout how you can introduce the regularization or how you can introduce the transfer learning techniques to improve improve your uh, training and validation accuracy in this case we are getting training accuracy as a one or you can say the 100% but validation accuracy is coming 80% only. That means your model is overfitting. Another quick uh, solution you can provide here uh, some other uh, uh, optimizer to uh, train it. So I'm going to provide here RMS prop optimizer just to see that if your uh, training accuracy and validation accuracy gets improved. tf.keras.optimizers and in this dot i provide here uh, rms prop so this rms prop optimizer is also adaptive optimizer and uh, this is uh, uh, stochastic gradient adaptive optimizer it automatically change uh, you know uh, the length of the learning rate or the momentum of the learning rate while the uh, while the training all right so it it it, it actually achieves it achieves uh, uh, accuracy faster thereafter uh, i provide here 0 0.001 
Now I'm going to provide here learning rate as the 0 0.001 and then this RMS prop I'm going to provide optimizer as RMS prop. Let's go ahead and run it again and then see what happens here. Now if I run it, our accuracy at the first hand accuracy achieved here is 99%. You know the problem. So the problem is your model actually uh, we have got model from here itself. All right, the model dot get model and uh, we had trained it once already. So the next time when we started training, it had already uh, uh, some learning from the, our previous start. So I need to get here a fresh model before start the training. So I got here a fresh model model is equal to the get model. There after fresh model, you have to do here model dot compile if I have done there to okay. So model dot compile is already done here. So we don't need to do that. So I get here a fresh model thereafter I do model compile and then I do the model fit. So I shouldn't be getting that 99% accuracy now. I started with 60%. Uh, that's the training accuracy. I need to see that our validation accuracy how much it is. Okay. So this time it seems like it is doing good. First hand I got around 65% uh, of the training accuracy but our validation accuracy was 73. Next time we got here 88 and we got around the 70 but the third time we got here 95 and the 87. Seems like in the second iteration it got overfit but in third iteration the somehow it managed it and in the fourth, uh, fourth iteration again it got overfit. Let's say in fifth iteration what happens. In fifth iteration, it is again overfitting. All right, so it's coming here the 65 with this one. Okay, seems like RMS prop also did not work. So what should we do now? Well, we don't have much, many. Uh, 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 we don't have many options here. We can try uh, Ada Max as well, just to see that if it works with the Ada Max. So I write here tf dot uh, optimizers. Because you know in machine learning algorithms there is no straightforward method to to identify that which optimizer is going to work or how many training or what learning rate is going to work. So for these things you need to keep testing which optimizer or which loss function works for you. I provide again here 0 0.001 as the learning rate and then I am going to change my optimizer to Adamax optimizer. And then again, I'm going to just train our model and let's see how much accuracy we can achieve with this. Well, seems like we started with 61. We achieved validation accuracy as a 50. In next one, we achieved 57. And in the third one, we achieved here uh, 92 and the 61. Seems like Adamax is not doing good in any way. So we have to go back to our RMS prop and uh, we can keep training for RMS prop then. All right, so seems like uh, it didn't work well. I need to con uh, go back to our RMS prop here. I just bring it back to the RMS prop. All right, after this RMS prop is done, then we are going to plot our training history here. So that we can see our uh, uh, the loss and uh, uh, training and validation accuracy uh, uh, how it is changing uh, as we are changing the number of epochs there. All right, perfect. Seems like it doesn't matter what we do. Our validation accuracy is getting stuck around the 75 to 80. That's okay uh, for now. Because you know the problem is with the data itself here. This data is generated by the computer. This is CGI generated data. And in the CGI generated data, we do not have uh, uh, feature variance. Like uh, uh, human and horses looks kind of the same because their backgrounds are the same. So that's why we are not able to achieve like 99 or 100 percent accuracy in the computer graphics. Moreover, the purpose of this training and the lecture series was the learning. So you have learned here how you can make a convolutional neural network. You have learned here how you can analyze your data and how you can train binary classification or binary classifier using convolutional neural network. 
let's go ahead and uh, plot our uh, loss and uh, accuracy curve here i'm going to just write here plot loss and uh, accuracy curve so i'm going to get here the figure and axis so i get it here the plt dot uh, subplots 2 comma 1 and then ax0 dot plot what happens here you see so i got here subplots this is having two rows and single column in the first row i'm gonna plot here our loss function and in second row i'm gonna plot our accuracy curve so i write here ax0 dot plot that's the first row in that i'm gonna get here the history now this history we got it here now if you copy this history and paste it here and you see this history you should be able to uh, it's not coming like that let me just check that if it has the keys okay so this history doesn't have any keys anyway that's uh, uh, if we put here history dot history then you should be able to see it has there the loss accuracy validation loss and the validation accuracy that's what we want to trade here so history dot history inside that i'm going to provide here a loss i'm going to provide this is loss this is the training loss and then for this one i'm going to provide here color as the blue color and the label i provide here training loss and uh, then ax0 at the same axis i'm going to also plot validation loss as well so i write here well loss this one is this one validation loss and for this one i'm going to provide here color as the red and then i say it as the validation loss now if you just run it you should be able to see here a plot for the this one is going to be uh, red one is the validation loss as number of training epoch increases validation loss gets increased that is why our accuracy got decreased thereafter i write here legend is equal to ax0 and then legend and the lock i'm going to provide here location and uh, that location i'm going to provide here best location so wherever it's going to fit there in fact you can just remove it there it's going to find out the best location to show these legend so it found that this is best location without the overlapping of uh, lines so it is saying that uh, it has put your legend here so in the same way you can also plot here accuracy as well so this should be the axis one that's mean the second row and now inside this history i need to get here the accuracy and then validation accuracy so here we have got training accuracy and thereafter we have got validation accuracy and then we have got here validation accuracy let's go ahead and just run it now you should be able to see here your training accuracy increases and it got settled around one that's the 100 percent accuracy for the training and your validation accuracy also it was increasing but it was lagging behind your training accuracy so this graph says that whatever the model we here built that was the overfitting now in coming lectures we will do the analysis to identify our uh, to to identify model overfit conditions and we will also try to solve these model overfitting cases let's go ahead and learn uh, how to save the model you can simply write here model dot save and you can provide the model name which you want to uh, where you want to save it you just write here horse human dot h5 so if you run it it's going to save it here in the current directory if you provide some other uh, uh, the place it will store there and you can simply then click on the download it's going to download horse or human on your download folder all right so that's the data it will download let's go ahead and see how you can load your model 
So you can say load model. I'm going to say here. I first need to import load model from the Keras model. So from TensorFlow dot Keras dot models import load underscore model. Then you write here model dot load is equal to model load underscore model and thereafter horse or human model dot h5 so what happens here we are loading model where we have written horse or human uh, in fact the model name is just horse or human so it's going to just uh, uh, load this model in model dot load all right so this now model and this model load is having the same model this model we got directly from the training and this model we got after loading what we had saved so these two model will work in the same fashion like the like uh, uh, in the same fashion these two model will work in the same fashion like these are freshly trained model let's go ahead and uh, complete the final part of this lecture we are going to write here a code to do the prediction all right so i'm going to first load the image and after loading the image then we will do the prediction and then see if our model is doing the correct prediction so i write here from tensorflow.keras.preprocessing import image and then i write here import numpy as np Thereafter, I'm writing here img image is equal to image dot load underscore img. And in that, I provide here horse or human. Uh, basically, I'm going to just load an image. I'm going to load here a horse image from horse or human from the test data set. All right, just go ahead and select some random image. I'm going to select here uh, image number 10. I provide that here so that's the address of that horse there thereafter I'm also uh, providing here you know the target size so this target size is going to be the 300 cross 300 if you remember that we had also this target size there that's the variable we had defined there which we had defined earlier as the 300 cross 300 uh, let me see that what I defined that at the start of this that was the image size actually All right, so I have here image size if I run it now It should you should be able to download uh, you should be able to load your image So this IMG is now loaded once it is loaded now We need to convert your image into the array. So I write here IMG is equal to image dot img to array this is getting converted to uh, this is getting converted to uh, you know uh, the numpy array this img got converted to numpy array in this case since we need a three dimensional vector currently our image got converted as the two dimensional vector now we need to convert our image into the three dimensional vector so i write here np dot expand underscore dims in this i i pass our uh, numpy array and then i need to provide here axis along with axis zero we need to actually pass it here all right then we have here img divided by 255 so what our image was having value from 0 to 255 Earlier, we had also done these kind of uh, normalization for our images. So we are going to, we are doing here same kind of the normalization for our image. Thereafter, we do here the predict, then I do here the prediction is equal to the model underscore load. Either you can use the model or model underscore load because these two model are the same model. There is no difference between the models. So I write here model load dot predict and inside that I pass here image and then you can see here this prediction. 
if you run it now you should be able to see this prediction so this prediction is saying that it is 0, 0.00 something and uh, basically at the sigmoid level uh, at the last cell where we had a sigmoid activation function it is saying that the probability is almost zero and if you remember if you see our uh, you know the class indices which we had seen earlier somewhere let me just see it here it says that if it is one then it is human if it is less than threshold threshold is 0 0.5 then it is horse all right so it's already 0, 0.00 something it's less than 0 0.5 that is why we can say that safely it is it is horse so i'm going to provide here threshold as 0 0.5 in binary classification condition and then i write here uh, predicted class is equal to prediction all right so this prediction you see it is the two dimensional i need to get the first one there 0 0 so we have got this one and then we say that if it is greater than threshold so it's not greater than threshold it is going to be a false and if i write here int so for false int will be always zero and uh, for true int converting true value into the int it will be one there all right so that's the predicted class so it's going to tell us that the predicted class is zero now we are going to get here the class indices so what we had seen earlier i'm going to just read those indices once again here that i get with the train generator dot class indices with this if you check your class indices you will get the same thing what we had seen earlier all right horse and the human so this class based on these uh, 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 the value 0 or 1 we need to get the class there so once you have got this now you need to make sure that your class indices get converted with 0 and 1 as its value and these as its uh, these as keys and these keys will get converted as the value so that one i'm going to write as like this labels is equal to something like this v and k that's mean this value will become now uh, here key and this key will become here value thereafter i write for k comma v in class underscore indices dot items so this is kind of the comprehensive list technique i'm using now if you check these labels your labels get converted 0 and 1 will be as keys and these are as value now it's easy based on the class indices we can identify the predicted class all right so i'm gonna say here labels since these class these predicted class will be always either 0 or 1 if it is 0 then it's horse if it is 1 then it's a human i provide here the predicted class and if i run it now you should be able to see here it as horses let's go ahead and test uh, let, let's go ahead and test it with some other uh, method as well i'm gonna just select here some other horse i'm just gonna copy the path and then i'm gonna just paste it here and then i'm gonna just run it now it's saying that it is a human although it is kind of a 50 50 chances but as you know that our model is not 100 percent accurate so there are the chances when this can make uh, these kind of the mistakes let's go ahead and check the human and then what happens with the human uh, i'm going to randomly select here uh, 111 by default i'm just gonna uh, you know the paste it here as the human now it should be able to select it as the human and now you see the probability is almost 100% for the human all right so that's how you can do the prediction for your given image you can give any image you can get the image from the internet as well and you can pass those image here for the prediction 
all right so this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching this if you have liked this video please subscribe this channel and like this video do share this channel and video with your friends and the social media thank you so much for your support